Last Halloween, a large attack occurred on a crowded train in Tokyo that left 17 people injured and caused shock throughout the nation. The biggest spectacle was that the perpetrator was dressed up in a Joker costume. Are you looking to try something new this spring? How about trying out some interesting food for once? With HelloFresh, you can try out a variety of global flavors all from your own kitchen. HelloFresh offers a wide variety of all kinds of quick and easy recipes that take minimal prep time and don't require a whole lot of cleanup afterwards. Not only that, but they come with step-by-step -step instructions on how to cook the food and pre-proportioned ingredients that definitely cut down on the meal prep time. Not only that, but you're going to end up with a lot less trips to the store as well. With HelloFresh, you even have options for adding, swapping, or upgrading proteins each week. Plus, you can add a protein to veggie dishes for even more flexibility. You'll cut down on time and you'll cut down on your food waste by about 25% as well compared to grocery shopping. So for today's demo, I decided to try out the balsamic tomato and herb chicken. This probably came out the best of anything I've tried so far and it tastes fantastic. Almost like I picked it up from a restaurant or something. And I usually suck at cooking anything that I haven't already made 6,000 times before, so that means something. Nobody likes blowing money on takeout every night or eating microwave banquet meals and stuff every day. This is a great way to cook at home for minimum effort and maximum output. So head over to HelloFresh.com and use my code DIRETRIP16, all caps, to get up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts across 6 HelloFresh boxes, free shipping included. Again, don't forget to go to HelloFresh.com and use my code DIRETRIP16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts. Japan is frequently listed as being one of the safest countries on Earth. Your chances of getting attacked in the country are pretty low. I felt more safe wandering around in Japan, even in the middle of the night, than I have anywhere else. But once in a while there are violent attacks, which you may know from my other videos. And I think people take an interest in them because they really stand out because the country is usually so peaceful. As you might expect, guns aren't really that much of a problem as they're pretty hard to come across in the first place, but knife attacks have been on the increase. For example, back in 2019, there was a guy who attacked a bunch of school kids that were waiting for a bus in Kawasaki. It resulted in two deaths and at least 18 others being injured. Then again, in August of 2021, just a few months before today's incident, a 36-year-old man named Yusuke Tsushima started stabbing people willy-nilly throughout a train in Setagaya, which ended up injuring nine people in total. The 2019 Joker movie, the one starring Joaquin Phoenix, ended up becoming a bit of a hit, even in Japan. The movie includes a scene where the Joker is harassed by several people on a train, and he turns the tables and fights back, shooting and killing them. It's a pretty impactful scene and undoubtedly left an impression on those who viewed it. People idolizing the Joker and wanting to be as cool as him isn't really anything new. It's been happening for a while now. I'm sure you've all seen the memes. His character tends to resonate with a certain kind of people, such as James Holmes, who dyed his hair red and shot up a movie theater in Colorado during a screening of The Dark Knight Rises. However, the man we're going to be talking about today was a 24-year-old man named Kyota Hattori. Hattori was born in Fukuoka in 1996, where he spent most of his life living with his mother and sister. Most of the people who knew him claimed that he was a very average guy, even going as far to say as he was fairly cheerful. He was bullied a lot throughout his time in school, but he had a decent social life and ended up dating a nice girl that he knew. He decided not to go on to college after graduating high school and instead took a job working at a manga cafe. Things didn't go too well, though. He was eventually fired after he was caught taking photos of female customers, and it's a little worse than you might think. He had installed a hidden camera in the bathroom of the cafe and a customer had come across it one day. It is believed that this is where his relationship ended. His girlfriend ended up dumping him and went on to marry someone else. This shattered Hattori. He started getting worse and worse socially. He got a few new jobs, but he never really performed too well and had a lot of trouble getting along with anybody. He eventually got a job at a big call center in Fukuoka and worked there for a solid three years, but eventually was fired in June of 2022 after a mountain of customer complaints. It seemed that his superiors tolerated these to a point, but after a while it just became too much to ignore. He felt that this was the last straw, that his life was over. 
This is where his hatred towards society really began to fester. In July, he decided to give everything up and leave Fukuoka behind. In his head, he had bigger fish to fry. He was formulating a plan, one that would end up in the deaths of others, and hopefully his own as well. He started living at hotels throughout several major cities in Japan. To do so, he took out a gigantic consumer loan. He didn't care about paying it off. He didn't think that he would ever have to, going where he was going. He hit up Kobe first, staying there for about a month, and then moved on to Nagoya, where he stayed for about a month as well. He was slowly making his way up to Tokyo, where he wanted to put his plan into motion. Upon arriving in Tokyo, he booked a hotel in Hachioji, an area on the west side of the city, and started staying there in late September. Using the hotel Wi-Fi, he hopped on Amazon and bought a 20,000 yen Joker costume, roughly 200 US dollars, along with about 20 cans of lighter fluid and a 30 centimeter long knife, which he had delivered to his room. He decided that Halloween would be the perfect time to carry out his plan. For one, the trains were bound to be packed with passengers. He wanted to take his anger out on young, happy, fashionable people. Not only that, but Shibuya, an area of Tokyo, is known for having gigantic Halloween celebrations each year. It would be the perfect time for him to get maximum attention, he thought. The crowded trains reminded him of the knife attack that took place back in August as well. He really admired the criminal in that case, but he also felt that the case was a bit of a failure, as that criminal attempted to pour oil all over the train and light it on fire, but failed to ever get it lit. The day finally came. Halloween night, 2021, Tokyo, Japan. Hattori left his hotel room and got onto a limited express train leaving from the Chofu station. He was wearing glasses and a green shirt, along with the previously bought purple Joker suit, seen in photos and videos of him later posted online. It was around 8pm when the train was nearing the Kokuryo station. He was on a 10-car train that was bound for Shibuya, where the Halloween party was taking place. After calmly sitting in the train for a while, Hattori abruptly began to spray pesticide right into the eyes of a 72-year-old man sitting next to him. He then took out his knife and plunged it into the man's chest. He got up from his seat, moved over to the next train car, and started pouring cans of his lighter fluid all over the car. A lot of people in the train simply watched on in confusion, thinking that this must be some sort of Halloween prank. However, once Hattori held up the bloodied knife, they realized that this was real and people began to flee the car. He then lit the lighter fluid on fire. Not only that, it has also been reported that he started throwing hydrochloric acid around during the incident as well. Passengers started crawling over each other in a desperate attempt to get out of the burning car. As the train passed through the Fuda station, one of the passengers on board hit the emergency stop button. The train was then set to make an emergency stop at the Kokuryo station as soon as it could. The train stopped a bit early, halting about 2-3 to three meters before the proper position leading to the train doors being blocked off by walls and making it difficult for the passengers to escape. In a desperate attempt to get out of the burning train and flee from the knife-wielding attacker, passengers started pouring out of the windows on the train in order to get out into the station. Some of them got out through the connecting door between trains as well. The guy who filmed what is probably the most well-known video of the incident said in an interview that the scene was terrifying. A lot of people on the train didn't even know what was going on, but they realized that something was definitely happening and they needed to get out as soon as possible. I was just listening to music when it happened, said another passenger on the train. Then I saw a man walking this way, slowly waving a long knife. I thought it was some sort of Halloween prank. It wasn't until I saw the other passengers running away that I thought, oh, this is bad. The fire on the train started getting worse, spreading all over the seats. Hattori had planned to set the fire in such a way that it would force all the passengers into the front car of the train. He had even practiced spraying the oil around in his hotel room, wanting to get his technique down perfectly so that everything would go according to plan. Witnesses later described to news outlets how Hattori stabbed 10 people on the train. His knife was covered in blood, said one witness. 
Seventeen were injured in total, with many being sent to the hospital over smoke inhalation-related issues, including some middle school students. The old man who was originally stabbed was left unresponsive. Feeling that his attack was finished, Hattori sat down on the train and lit up a cigarette while he politely waited for the police to arrive and arrest him. Police poured into the train when they ran into the suspect. Drop the knife, they shouted, and he calmly complied. Police arrested him right there on the spot and suspended train services while they started an investigation of the crime scene. The Tokyo Fire Department later stated that three of the people who were injured had serious wounds. The man who was originally stabbed in the chest was still unconscious. Hattori happily told the police that he really admired the Joker character, even going as far as saying that he looked up to him, but it appears that he didn't really explain why. Looking at the Odaku Line train case in August, I targeted an express train which would have more passengers and use cigarette lighter fluid, he told the police, explaining his plan. Hattori went on to explain to a news agency that he had wanted to kill someone since June, ever since he was fired from his job and all of his personal relationships fell apart. He confessed that he had fully intended to kill the man that he stabbed, along with many others. He told the authorities that his main goal in all of this was to get the death penalty and end his life. He stated, I thought that you were supposed to get the death penalty if you killed two or more people. I used the attack on the Oda Express in August as a reverence. Luckily, the old man who was in critical condition later recovered from his wounds. This attack, the Joker incident, clever title I know, had left a lot of citizens wondering if it was even safe to ride on the public trains anymore. The authorities struggled to convince the public that this was an anomaly, it wasn't the norm when riding on public transport. They told the people of Tokyo that, rest assured, they would do whatever they could to ensure that people would be safe. The media quickly began to speculate if any more knife-related incidents were going to spark up, especially if people started idolizing the previous criminals in these knife attacks like Hattori did. Needless to say, the whole Joker costume quickly became the main focus of this incident, quickly getting news attention all over the world. Some wondered if he was somewhat acting out the scene from the Joker movie, blaming the movie itself, at least partially, for what had went down, as usually happens in cases like this. This wasn't helped by the fact that Hattori both flat out admitted to admiring the character and wanting to kill as many people as possible. However, a criminal psychologist who worked on this case said that rather than mimicking the character, Hattori was likely just trying to draw as much attention to himself as he possibly could. I think he wanted to stand out, said Professor Yasuyuki Deguchi, who is a criminal psychologist at Tokyo Mirai University. He is a distorted attention seeker. By dressing up as the Joker on Halloween night, he thought he would stand out more. By acting like the Joker and saying he wanted to look up to him, he can get more attention from the people. I don't think he decided to copy the Joker because he saw the movie. In late November, while he was still being held in custody, Hattori was served up a big fat arrest warrant for his attack on Halloween night. The charges were attempted murder and arson. Those who knew him growing up were shocked upon hearing about the crime. The Hattori they knew was a very different man, at least when they knew him. They had no idea what happened to the happy guy they used to know. A lot of them doubted that this could have even been him in the first place. One previous classmate speculated to the news that Hattori had likely snapped upon losing his ex-girlfriend and seeing her marry another man, which began to bring his past into the spotlight. This classmate felt that Hattori had snapped under the pressure of losing his relationship, his job, and what he felt was his entire life. The transport minister, a man named Tetsuo Saito, attended a news conference in which he said that the government had informed train companies that they were to increase security in order to hopefully prevent any possible future attacks from happening. Trains are essential to the life of society, and it's extremely important to be able to feel safe as you ride them, he said. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you thought it was interesting, please give it a like, it helps me out in the algorithm, and if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. I do these every week. Sometimes Japanese cases, sometimes not. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked in the description below. And speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We have Marsh Kaleido, AMCMT, Balls, Rick Torres, Farius, 
Tang, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Adrian Lawley, Marsh, Buffazerk, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Skooky Maine, Jackie, Trace Ferguson, and Mark Barnett. You people are good people. Very good people. Thank you, and good night.